Wasallam, do not joke around in matters of Allah's commands. Now, messengers do have a sense of humor. That is recorded and it's there. The messenger والسلام, used to be humorous himself. There are many occasions where he laughed and made the Sahaba laugh and things like that. There are occasions of humor in other lives of prophets that are recorded in Quran as well. But when it comes to Allah's commands, that's not a joking matter. That is not a joking matter. Here, a very important lesson for all Muslims, especially in our time. There's a very deliberate desensitization of Muslims taking place. We don't see it at its face value because it's happening covertly. You know what it is? Most, you know, they'll make fun of a prophet. It won't even be Muhammad or Rasulullah wasallam. They'll make fun of Jesus. They'll make fun of Musa a.s. They'll make fun of Adam a.s. They'll make fun of these prophets in their cartoons or stand-up comedy or whatever it is. And the first time you hear it, you'll be like, Astaghfirullah and you'll change the channel. The next time around, it's not that bad. It's okay. Actually, it's kind of funny. And then they'll keep crossing the line until they get to the Messenger himself sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right? And then they'll make one, one uh, inappropriate remark about the Messenger and Muslims will be in an uproar. But then they'll, make an, they'll let the Muslims yell and scream for a while, then a couple of months later they'll do something again. So they'll have the, you know, the, the satanic verses back in the day in the 80s, right? Then the, a, a few years later then we might have something like the Danish cartoon. Then a few years later, there's a South Park bear is going to be there. And there's going to be like, every few months there's going to be something. And then what, what happens is, the first time you yell and scream, the second time you yell and scream, the third time you get a little tired. And you're not, what, what's being done is, you're slowly being dulled. You're being dulled, your, your reactions are being dulled out. Right? And it's a very measured mechanism by which you can desensitize a nation to the point where they're like, ah, what's the point? You know, and you just become completely desensitized. If you understand that this is the game, then you don't fall into the game. But you first have to understand the game is being played with us. A lot of Muslims don't, they're not, we don't, we don't think of street smarts, you know. We don't think of how these games are being played with the ummah and its sentiments at large. First of all, our reaction is not supposed to be emotional. Our reaction is supposed to be intellectual. And it's supposed to be in language. You know, if somebody uses language that hurts you, you have to use language back, civilized language back, but you have to hit them where it hurts. When they hit you where it hurts you, you hit them where it hurts you. Now, to give you an example, though I don't claim to have the solutions, the language of this country is lawsuits. That's, it's spoken better than English, okay, in this country. So when people say th- something about Allah's Messenger, وسلم, or somebody even messes with you a little bit at your job, you're going for vacation and some co-worker says to you, oh, you're going for terror training? Haha, <laughs> just kidding. Immediately lawsuit, defamation. Immediately. So they know not to mess with us. They know, because this is the only language they understand. The language that costs dollars, US dollars, that's the only ideology in this, in, in, among the people who do this. And by the way, even if you uh, study the strategy of those who did the South Park cartoon and whatnot, you know what their strategy was? The, their, their cartoon ratings were going down. You do this, what's gonna happen? Advertising money, they're on the news, everybody wants to watch the video, etc., etc., and the ratings go back up. We gave them the popularity. We handed it to them. Who was gonna buy Salman Rushdie's book? The guy's a joker. Who was gonna buy his book? The only thing that increased his sales is us, is our reaction to him. You know? And now, on the contrary, look at one of the more intelligent responses. There was attempts in, in New York City to make um, sort of a you know, progressive or enlightened, reformed version of Islam where women lead prayer and things like that. You must have heard about that. Though the sister from what I've heard has made istighfar since and has retracted her position on the issue, the one who led the Jum'ah prayer and whatnot. Initially, Muslims were going crazy and this and that and the other. But the Muslims in New York, guess what? Ah, this is a bunch of idiots. Let's just, you know, don't pay them attention because that's all they live off of. So they stopped paying attention. And guess what? Disappeared. Now that group even had a falling out within. The only thing unifying them was they, were, they made themselves appear like victims of this mass you know, effort of the, the orthodox Muslims that are trying to undermine their heroic efforts of reforming Islam. Muslims didn't pay attention and all their momentum was gone. We have to learn, to, we have to first of all pick our battles and when we pick them we have to fight them intelligently. We have to fight them intelligently. And this is something we have to learn to adapt. We can't be like guinea pigs. They can even, I can, I can bet you they can have meetings where they say, when we do this, when we publish this cartoon, or air this episode, or make this comment on TV, etc., etc., I, I can tell you right now what their reaction is going to be. They've got us figured out better than lab rats. 
you know. So we have to be a little smarter and understand when these things are happening. Now, the, the reason I brought all of this up, messengers don't make jokes in regards to commandments. So when they said, are you taking us as a joke? What's the response of Musa alayhi salam? Qala a'udhu billah. First thing, I seek refuge in Allah. What does that tell us? That tells us that making jokes in regards to commandments of Allah is something very serious. And if you're engaged in it, you better seek the protection of Allah because that can only be from shaitan. And then he says, أَنْ أَكُونَ مِنَ الْجَاهِلِينَ I seek Allah's protection, His refuge, that I might become from those... Now the translation says ignorant. But jahil, part of the meaning of jahil is ignorant. But that's also ghafil. Heedless, ignorant. Jahil actually is the opposite in Arabic of aqil. It's the, it's the, you know, the lid of aqil. Aqil in Arabic means someone who has control over their emotions. Jahil means someone who has no control over what they say and what they do. They have no restraints on them. So Musa alayhi salam says, if you think I am joking with you about what Allah commanded, then I, that would be an act of jahil. That would be an act of lack of restraint. I seek Allah's protection from ever being that way. قَالَ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ أَنَ أَكُونَ مِنَ الْجَاهِلِينَ Once again, in my final point about this, to just to relate something as a lesson to what we're facing right now. Among Muslims, especially among youth, certain things have become a joke. And they've become a joke with us, with American Muslim youth, because we see them as a joke in the larger society. For example, even in elementary school, and I'll just come out and say it, because you guys have to know this stuff, jokes about homosexuality are common. It's a joke. You're acting gay, don't be gay, this and that, you're such a homo, etc., etc. You know, that's what she said, these kinds of jokes. That have to do with fornication, adultery, homosexuality. These are common jokes. It's considered small talk. It's not a big deal. Are these serious matters of crimes as far as our deen is concerned? They're very serious. The first, la- la- the first line of defense, the first crack, when you stop taking something seriously is when you can joke about it. If you can joke about it, it's an indication you no longer take it that seriously. So when the society jokes about it, you know, homosexuality was actually entered into mainstream culture in America, if you study its history, it was entered by means of comedy. It was entered by that means. First it was something to be laughed at and laugh about and it was entertaining. And eventually it just became so much so a part of, you know, uh, the, the culture that it's kind of crazy. You know, a, fr- a friend of mine was playing basketball the other time in New York City. In Queens, he's playing ball, and somebody called a foul, and the other guy says, man, you're being gay. And the guy goes, what's wrong with that? And he starts like getting angry. This is how crazy it's become, <laughs> you know? But our children, Muslim children, don't think they're immune from these things. They hear these things all the time. They see them all the time. So when that's, what this happens to them, they, they make jokes about these things that in and of themselves are completely and utterly unacceptable in Islam. And this would be an act of jahl. Because the first thing is to be able to joke about it, and once that, that line has been crossed, you don't know where it goes eventually. Because now that thought has become common. And these utterances have become common. The things you say a lot are the things you think about a lot. And when you think about something a lot, it influences you. You know, it influences. This, this is why we have to have very strict sensitivity in regards to what we allow our, our, ourselves and our children to say. And especially youth, sometimes even religious youth make these kinds of jokes not realizing the potential harm they're doing to themselves and the environment around them. Because they say it's harmless, everybody's doing it, everybody has these kinds of jokes, it's not a big deal. Well it is. So, أَنَّكُونَ مِنَ الْجَاهِلِينَ